All right, welcome to the new and improved Stable Talk Online. Today we have Ryan, Patrick, and Martino. I will let you tell the audience your last name here. Uh, Picarello. Picarello. Uh, we have two standout guys from our men's ice hockey team at Stevenson University. We got, we'll get into everyone here, but we got Ryan Patrick from West Virginia. Um, Man started playing ice hockey at age four, was already traveling to Pittsburgh by age eight, and last year he was all Mac seventh uh, second team. We got Martino, who is born and raised in New Jersey, um, played lacrosse as well, and so ultimately focusing on ice hockey, and he had a plus ten rating last year, as well as nine blocked shots. Oh, Marty! Don't pump my tires too hard, Jay. <laughs> it's, the little, it's the little things. It's, a, it's the little things. If you guys want to go ahead and um, maybe just introduce yourselves a little bit further than what Jay said, go ahead. Everyone's Ryan, start. absolutely. Oh, I'm starting. Please do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, as Jay said, I'm from West Virginia, Morgantown, to be a little more specific. That's where. Uh, WVU is for the West Virginia University, for those of you who don't know. Uh, it's a good time down there. You know, proud to be from here. Uh, but, yeah, I've been playing hockey pretty much all my life. Uh, I love it. And Stevenson's been a great place for me. Uh, and I think it's a great opportunity just as a program for us to, you know, put Stevenson on the map in the hockey uh, area. I think we're going to be – we were pretty good this year. I think we're going to be good again next year. But, um. Yeah, I'm a business communications major. Uh, I want to go into PR, or marketing, community relations, something like that for a sports organization. Uh, play the sport. I might as well, uh, you know, work in it some way, shape, or form. So that's kind of me. I don't know. I don't have any fun facts or anything, or I'd say something. I'm, you know, I think being from West Virginia is a fun fact enough. People. Yeah, uh, go mad years. Exactly. People give us a hard time, but great. Country place. roads. Take me home, you know? Why? <laughs> All right, awesome. Um, yeah, uh, Martino Picariello, like I said. I say it to you from ways Picariello, Picariello. Don't get it confused. You can say it however you like. But um, uh, he, Jade mentioned I grew up in Jersey, but um, not a lot of people know I was born in Philadelphia. Lived there till I was around three or four, and then my mom wanted to go to the public schools there, which makes sense because schooling is way too expensive to pay for a four-year-old to get a good education. Um, but... Some of Ryan, played hockey most of my life. Uh, lacrosse was my second sport, was a spoon guy. That was a good time, good good period of my life. And then chose uh, chose Stevenson for the same reasons Ryan did, you know, just build the program and meet great, awesome people. Nice, all right. Um, so with recent events going on with this whole quarantine thing, <laughs> Oh, what are you guys doing to stay active, keeping up with your classes? Do you guys have any tips for any people? What are you guys up to? They probably deserve some tips from us, Martino. We're pretty pretty studious guys here. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe we should be getting some tips. Can we get some callers? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How can I Little get my home? Yeah, no. Um, I mean, I don't know. I think... I've been trying to work out as much as I can. I mean, I don't have many things in my house other than a treadmill and like a couple, uh, like five pound dumbbells or something, but that's enough for me. I mean, that's a good start to the summer workout. Uh, you know, but um, no, I mean, I, I've been just working out uh, probably two to three times a week if I can. I also work um, for my family's company uh, just to kind of help out during these times. So I'm working two days a week there. And then, yeah, what, just, uh, what's that? Uh, it's a beer and liquor and wine distributor. Um, nice. So, so you're um, looking for the cases of beer. Yes, you better believe it. I'm in the warehouse all day just moving stuff around. So it's uh, it's fun, though. It's keeping me active. Uh, I got my family here. got my girlfriend here. So, you know, that's all good stuff. And. It just, uh, I guess, yeah, just trying to stay active. I would recommend just board games. 
I love board games. I mean, Marty knows it. We play a lot of board games and card games at the house because we're roommates. Board games. Yeah. 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 So I just bought, I just rebought like a bunch of like Wii cords because. Oh we lost, like, yes. And the remote, the new remote should be here today, and I'm really excited. <laughs> I want to get a Nintendo Switch. I need a Switch. I've been playing some. Ga- yeah. I've been playing. Game- I've got my GameCube in my place. I'm playing some yeah. of that. Uh, the game to go to. You look at YouTube, just Wii and Nintendo. I'm jealous. I have an Xbox. That's all. I'd rather have those. Not as fun. Oh. Uh, you, did, I was gonna say board game wise. I don't know if I mentioned this in the in our first take, but Battleship. Um, it's a mind Ooh, game. That's a good one. Yeah, it really is, and it's also kind of luck of the draw. So it's it's never like it's one sided. Like I, I'll never forget playing like. It's called um, Rummy Cube with my grandma when I was younger. It was like she'd win every single time. When it comes to Battleship, it's not always like that. Sometimes you get a, a lucky win here and there. So, Yo, it's Mark, nice. gotta build so as house. we mentioned, you guys are roommates. We were wondering, did you guys hit it off like day one, square one? Or was there ever like, oh, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah, who are you, buddy? My you guys um, the king bedroom. <laughs> it's funny when I met Ryan he was in my hometown Philly in Philadelphia um and I met him the year before he came to or two years before he came to Stevenson one year before I came so it actually worked out pretty pretty well it was pretty funny met at the Philadelphia Rebels he played continued to play there while I moved on to college and then when he decided to move on to college I just kind of gave him uh, a spot in my house and he was just one of the best guys to have to be honest with you I'm not gonna chirp him sit here like he's you know, tough to have around. He's not. It was actually very convenient for all of us. And plus, we had an extra room that needed to be taken. So I think it was a win-win all around when he first came in the house. And that, and the way it happened couldn't have really been any better. Yeah. Now we just, we've just bloomed. It's just gotten better, Marty. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost bloomed. like a bromance in a way, um, yeah. if I can uh, be yeah. quite frank with you all. Um, no, uh, I, he's Marty's right. We uh, we met before Stevenson. Great guy. He's hilarious. Um, we got a good dynamic. Great chemistry. You know, we we play a lot of Xbox together. I usually yeah. win. No surprise. <laughs> um, but you know, Marty is uh, yeah, he's great. He's awesome. Great house guy. Talk about a guy who cooks some good food. The Italian Italian food just getting cooked up in that house all the time. It's always a good smell. Uh, I just wish he would do his dishes a little more. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There's five guys in the house. There's no way this is getting done on time. Yeah. But yeah. Um, it's nice too because Patty works for a beer, wine, and liquor distributor. So, you know, it's just it's food for him. Guys. We're and, of yeah. age. We're of age. There's, we don't drink in season, but <laughs> we're of age. There's goods in the house that are that are just transferred. It's just a great system we have so far. Good yeah, friend to have. Yeah. What's the first thing you guys are going to do once, like, stay-at-home orders are, are off? What's the first thing you're going to go out and do? I haven't even thought about this yet. Uh, Bars are open. Go around state and, like, border. touch everything. State, border, <laughs> state borders are gone. First thing. Yeah. First thing. What would you guys yeah, go out and do? Well, I'm looking to travel, so I guess I would travel, to be honest with you. Yeah. No, we're going gonna... to get together. Yeah, we'll get together and do something most likely. Marty's got a Marty's got a, a shore house in New Jersey on the uh, yeah on the beautiful beaches of New Jersey. So he we used, we went up there at the end of the school year last year and with only a few weeks left in the semester. Hope maybe yeah. we'll get lucky and this uh, this quarantine will get called off and then we'll go. Uh, I'll go up to the beach. You guys should come. Great time. I'm inviting people yeah. to the house, Marty. Yeah, I was just telling him that uh, I was born in Atlantic City, and then, like, we have a beach house on the Jersey Shore as well. Wow. Right? Looks like yeah. I know where we're all hanging out. We should do a live podcast. This a is going to be a podcast, a podcast from the beach. <laughs> from the yes. Bring us back like again. Jersey, we'll bring let's do, like, back. Jersey Shore edition. I like that. Oh, Yes. I like that. We, we want to follow the cameras problems. around. <laughs> yeah. Go to, what follow me around one at the Hard Rock. Right. Follow so me around one at the Hard Rock. Huh? Did you guys watch okay. Jersey Shore? Oh, yeah. What was that club name? Karma? Karma. Karma, yeah. 
There used to be a club in Morgantown called Karma. <laughs> We're going to move into some uh, team superlatives here. So this could be player, coach, or trainer. Okay. All right, the Mason. first one, um, most likely to have a career in stand-up comedy. Ooh. Um, just, or this past year, Stelzer. I would say Justin Stelzer. Stelzer, yeah. Um, that guy, he was a senior. That guy, yeah. Yeah, he's witty, but he just, I mean, he also just doesn't, I talk a lot, he doesn't shut up. He doesn't. No. He knows. And also, he knows how to control a group of people. Like, he'll find something that's funny and just build on that. And I think that's a key thing for comedians. I think he'd be just fine. Hey, man, uh, I, put, I put Ryan Kenny. Ryan Kenny is a comedian. Up there. Very dry sense of humor, but yeah, he would get some fans. <laughs> yeah. All right, this next one is uh, it's it's a two-part. All right, so we got most likely to win the lottery – but lose the winning ticket. Mm. Oh. <laughs> oh. He, lost our, he lost our grocery re receipts this year. Uh, That's nice. <laughs> oh, um, you just, more serious, who you got, Marty? I was thinking along the lines of, like, Javens or something. Just the, the guy that would really get lucky and get it, but then the guy who would just mess it up at the end and not be able to play <laughs> Capucci. Capucci. <laughs> yes. And also, he's a guy who likes to take risks. So, yeah. Lottery yeah, Capucci, Capucci would lose it all in a matter of, like, two days. Mm -hmm. Between those three <laughs> guys. That's definitely Okay. Right. Cool. Yeah. All, right. all right. What about most likely to become a reality TV star? Ryan Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> What kind of reality TV? What kind of reality TV would you be in if you were? I'm just talking about Jersey Shore. He could be the scenario, you know, not yeah. the situation. They call him Ryan the scenario. <laughs> I am the show. I am the show. I love. I love reality TV. I mean, Marty's not wrong. I think I could get into it. I would. I would enjoy it. Talk some gossip, maybe. You, you know. know how to make good TV. I can see that. Yeah, some house magic will get going on. I don't know. Who knows, you know? You could, you could just give the producers exactly what they're asking for. <laughs> give them my normal life, and they'll be like, wow, this is perfect. We can really <laughs> do something with this. Yeah, I, I, like, I like all reality TV. I watch the Jersey Shore. There used to be a show based out of West Virginia called Buck Wild. Um, that lasted for a whopping, like, season. Um, I like Big Brother. Big Brother's a good one. And uh, there's a lot on Netflix now. Like, what is oh, it? Yeah, Love is time. Blind. Um, that stuff's pretty neat. Uh, what was the one we watched, Marty? The one, the social media one, The Circle. The Circle. Oh, I've heard. I've I, I have it on my list. I haven't like watched it though. Yeah, yeah, for yeah, those who haven't watched the Circle. Yeah, that's a binge show. That's for almost sure. like that's like kind of like this, right? They're like all FaceTime or Skype. Yeah, kind of. yeah, yeah, literally the whole time. <laughs> It's everything minus face. It's actually funny. It's everything minus FaceTime. You can text, like send pictures, like everything. Okay, you can't, you can't see each other. Exactly. So you can catfish people. It's actually really funny. <laughs> Curveballs everywhere. Nothing to like. Just, just nothing there. That was a Keep house show for a little bit this year. Yeah, you can vote on people that go far. It's pretty fun for a group of people to watch. I definitely recommend it. Yeah. Best, uh, best bromance on the team. Cool. Honestly, I'd say Capucci and Murray. Uh, Matt Capucci and Aaron Murray. They are D partners, first off, since freshman year. Played, I think, maybe 40 games together. Started about 90% of them. Off the ice, they live together uh, across the hall. Like, they're just, I think, the definition of a bromance. The ultimate, in, ultimate in, bromance. Just yeah. take care of each other. You can see them just, like, scrubbing each other's back in a bathtub. Like, those are the kind of guys that <laughs> The so brothers actually, do. I'm pretty sure they have done that. Yeah. <laughs> they have t-shirts. They have t-shirts with their faces together on it. It's actually really funny. Oh, my God. That's, I, I, <laughs> that's a good one, Mark. I was going to say either them or uh, Woodsy and Moyer. Woodsy and Moyer, oh. Gray, the, the, the tree house. I mean, Gray is usually hanging with Ham or going and playing professional hockey somewhere. But, um, you know, 
he uh that that house they're tight knit i mean they do everything together they're always together i'm pretty sure woodsy and moyer like don't even sleep in the, their beds half the time they like sleep on the they used to sleep on the couches together so they could like <laughs> <there. Holy laughs> hands. that's funny all right last one most likely to be late to your own graduation Ooh, marty <laughs> i mean lateness lateness you're thinking chris lee but, yeah, um, Lee. Yeah, He's Lee, a freshman, and so we Lee and Master, the yeah. freshman struggle. They needed watches this year. We, we yeah, we had Secret <laughs> Santa. We got we got him a watch. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the next guy here. Definitely the freshman. Yeah, was, Lee, Lee and Master. Yeah, okay. just yeah, short and sweet. Those guys, terrible, t- terrible time. We're going to move into uh, some Q&As here. So first up, we just got, what is your favorite or most memorable or standout Stevenson ice hockey victory? So that could be a blowout, could have been overtime. Best victory. Honestly, if we, we could say the same exact thing on if we counted down from three right now. I know we'd think of the same game. I right. really hope you're well, right. If we yeah, see the wrong team, we're going to sound like rock Casey, Casey, give us a countdown. It, it was from this past year, right. and if you mess this up, I'm pretty disappointed in you. <laughs> I'll do three, two, one, and then on go say it. Three, okay. two, one, go. St. Norbert. Okay, yeah. Yeah. yeah no, no, no. St. Norbert for sure. <laughs> that was a good one. That was good a job, good job. one. Good job. Good job. I tell about it a little. Yeah, yeah at the time, I think that's, that was why, I think. That was yeah, I think mm-hmm. Marty said we were ranked. Yeah, no, uh, we were, we were, we were ranked at the time, and they're typically a powerhouse team in Division Three. Uh, they started off a little rocky this year, but they ended up finishing pretty strong. So, I mean, that was a huge win for us, a huge win for the program, kind of put us on the map really to start things this year. Um, but it also was just one of those games of back and forth, like it was. I'm, I don't think there was ever more than like a one or two goal lead at any point. And I think the game finished what, like six, five, yeah. like a lot of scoring, a lot of good, like just fast paced hockey. And it was fun. I mean, I, I got a buddy on that team from prep school that I used to play with. He actually used to be my line mate at prep school. So like I had a really good buddy on the team and it was fun playing against him. So all in all, that game was just, yeah, it was just, it was crazy. I mean, you're out there and just you can feel the emotion, the speed. That's the best part about hockey is it's all just reaction and instinctual. So it's there's just like you you get into that moment and it's just like you go, go, go. And you know when you're in a game because it's fast and it's like you just you don't have time. You're just so locked in. Yeah, he hit the nail on the head. That's exactly right. It's exactly how it felt, just fast. So cool. that was definitely the game for me. For us. All right. Yeah. What about your guys' worst ice hockey injury? Marty's got probably a lot to talk about. I'll let him go. First one, they're all terrible. <laughs> there's no good injuries. As long as they stop you from playing the game you love, there's no good injuries. Tell you yeah. That. Yeah, sadly. Worst one, though, uh, when I got here, I had the two broken ribs my freshman year, which um, if, if anyone's had broken ribs, bruised ribs, no yeah, laughing. I've had, bruised, I've had bruised ribs, and, like, I can't I, imagine I, having broken ones. I yeah. cracked mine and, like, partial, partially ruptured my spleen. Oh. Yeah, I shouldn't even be talking about that. The spleen itself is painful. Yeah, that's terrible. But How do you – uh, what, what happened to you? It was my freshman – it was, like, right at the Christmas mark. It's actually funny. Um, it was December 7th, and we had our France trip. Uh, we went to uh, the French Alps my freshman year – December 12th, December 13th, so about like five, six days later. And I broke them, and I was like, all right, let's get x-rays. I thought it was my shoulder at the time. Um, but Did you take – did you check or fall? I didn't, or? Even, I didn't even – yeah, so oh, that's how it happened. Uh, so I, I got ripped, basically. I got buried, just absolutely torched. I was trying to get to the red line and get the puck in. And one of their <clears throat> best or biggest guys kind of came up to me from Nazareth and laid me out in Nazareth, which is seven hours away in Rochester, New York, so – after the game, I'm sitting there on the bus for seven hours on this terrible coach bus, and now that, that's just a story in itself. But yeah. Um, anyway, I X-rayed my shoulder because that's what we thought it was. Um, wasn't my shoulder, no injuries. So he just said it was probably a contusion, and I could go to France and I could play in France. I ended up playing games in France and re really hurt my ribs even worse. But we didn't know it was my ribs still. So he's like rolling me out, digging into my, my sides, like trying to get these contusion knots out. 
in the meantime, I just had broken ribs for the past like three, four weeks and no one really knew. And it was kind of funny that when I found out, I was just like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> like, this is kind of crazy that I went through all this stuff to find out that they're broken like weeks, weeks later, yeah. almost a month. Was, yeah, that was terrible. That was probably the first month of my life. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that Marty, you've had you've had some bad luck, man. I mean, more power to you for fighting through because you always come back. Um, but I've been pretty lucky. I don't, I you know, knock on wood here, but I haven't really had sustained any bad injuries. I think just the worst are honestly concussions. I've had a few concussions throughout the years now, um, and those just suck because you just they're really up in the air. It's hard to tell like when you're back to normal. And just sometimes it doesn't seem like anything's wrong and you just want to play. And those are frustrating. But I think it's because I'm shorter uh, than most guys on the ice. So I get a lot of hits, like, near the head. Um, yeah. Also, I get a lot of cuts on my face because of it. So I've had – I think I've had, like, upwards of, like, 50 to, like, 70 stitches in my face, like, yeah. playing hockey just because everyone Jeez. hits – everyone's shoulders hit me in, like, the cage or in the face. So my cage is like constantly smacking against my face or just like the, the like uh, pressure from the hit is just causing like, you know, cuts to happen. So I've, it sucks being short sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. But also, I, you know what, I'm short. It is what it is. Live it up. Embrace it. All right. So you guys just won the 2021 National Championship. And you're on the aux. What are you putting on the first thing you get in the locker room? Party, Party in the USA. Party Miley Cyrus. <laughs> Great choice. Tycoon future. Ooh. All right, two different vibes there. Two different vibes. Very, very two different vibes. Like he, he's like hood. Here. Ryan will tell you this. He, he's very hood. <laughs> he, he gangster. West Virginia he hood. Hey. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, you gotta listen to the lyrics in that song. There's a reason I picked it. it he's a tie, he's a tycoon. That's why they hate him. So if you win it all, you're at the top. Everyone doesn't like you. So I'm playing that yeah. anthem and driving out to that. Send, me that. Send me that song. I gotta hear that. Yeah. All right. Last Q and A. What's your favorite sports movie? Miracle. Does it have to be like a serious movie? No. Uh, it's called the comeback. It's the comebacks. I think it's so funny. Just based off this guy named Lambo Fields, uh-huh. who's just a terrible coach. It's like a <laughs> check it out for those who like to watch spoofs. It's pretty funny. The comebacks. <laughs> All right, we're gonna move into Last... some. Uh... <clears throat> what do you say? Go ahead. We're gonna move into some um, trivia here. Ice hockey and uh, Stevenson trivia here. If we can stump you guys this time. Where was the first indoor ice hockey made? Indoor like ice rink, hockey. Rink made. In the U.S.? Anywhere. North America. That's a hint I say, that I answered with that. I would say the capital of hockey, like Toronto, Ontario, in that province. Could Ryan, be off. any guesses? I mean, that seems like the right answer, but I feel like this is just wild trivia. Maybe it was Maryland. Was it the Rise of Sound Sportsplex? Yeah. That wasn't a trick question. It was Montreal. <laughs> yeah, it was Montreal. Montreal. Ooh. All right. So this is a question about your guys' head coach. How many winning seasons out of 11 does Coach Dahls have in his career of coaching? Winning seasons meaning just above 500, right? Yeah. Yes. And so this includes his time at Stevenson and his time at Newman. Newman. He may have not even had one losing season at Newman, and I know he had one, I think, just last year. So two? I'll say two. So nine out of 11? Yeah, I was, like, yeah, I was gonna say he's probably at eight out of eleven. Eight. I'll say nine out of. Ooh, it's eight. Eight. <sighs> oh, you guys are close. He has he has two he has two under Stevenson, and six, six. out of seven at Newman. Oh, uh, was that only oh, my freshman year? Duh. Yeah. 
We were like, we had a lot of ties that year. It was so close. I think we were right on the bubble, which is like. Yeah, I think both of them were point four six. I think. Yeah, yeah, probably around there. Yeah. All right. My iPad knows the numbers though. I'm good. I'm good. 2019, 2020, Stevenson Ice Hockey, top three in assists. Brenza, Brenza, me. Oh. Um. There's actually a tie for third, so you technically need four here because you're 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 right so far. It's probably you master. Probably, probably master, and I would say either Murray or Ripley. Murray. Murray. Sure, Murray. Yeah. yeah. Nice job. It's funny because that's his entire power play unit. <clears throat> <laughs> what? The guys who had the most points on the team, that was all on your unit because we had such a good power play. It was deadly. Yeah, we had a – we were good. It was fun this year. I mean, I, I'm a passer at heart, so I take pride in that. That's that's my game, playmaker. If you look up one more stat for the most goals, the guy that was on the other side of the rink had the most goals. Yeah, I just, <laughs> yeah, I just passed him the puck. That was literally, it was a good time. Fun to watch. Nice part about right. playing with two guys that can score. Oh, yeah. yeah. This one, this one, we'll see if Ryan can get, if Marty can get this, I'll be impressed. <laughs> Three names who aren't from West Virginia and one who is. So I'm going to give you guys four names. One of them, one of the people are from West Virginia and the three aren't. So see if you guys can t figure out which one's not. So the first one's Hulk Hogan, Steve Harvey, Chris Brown, and Adam Sandler. Which one is from West Virginia? Yeah. yeah. I know. I know. All right. I'll, gosh, yeah. Hit us. Because we got a New Jersey one next. Oh, okay. Uh, I think it's – I think Steve Harvey's from West Virginia. I'll, I was going to say yeah. probably like Steve, yeah. Yeah, okay. Steve Harvey's from West Virginia. Nice job. That's what I thought, you your, yeah. You got your state facts, right? I got to represent. I got to represent. <laughs> All right, Martino. All right, so there are, we were, I did some research. There was, I don't remember the exact number, maybe about 12 former or current NHL guys from New Jersey. I could be way off on that number. But James yeah. Van Riemsdyk specifically leads all New Jersey-born NHL players in what category? Penalty minutes, games played, or game-winning goals? I'd say game-winning goals. I was going to say GWG. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he had the most game-winning goals and most penalty Power play goals out of any uh, New Jersey born player. Absolutely. Like Park his down power down. Play, yep. He's just I, grew, I grew up a, a Flyers fan with my dad. I don't watch like hockey too much anymore, but I used to watch like a lot of Flyers games with my dad and Van Driesdyk and Danny Briere with my guys. Dude, Danny, Danny B. I used to say, hat. My uh, my grandmother got me a Danny Briere jersey like the Christmas before they traded him to like I think the Maple Leafs maybe, like the literally the like very that. his very last year in Philly I got like a jersey and then I was like come on, dude. Yeah, I think Marty and I both have relationships in some way with Briere. Uh, I actually played with his sec his middle child um, for about a year in Philadelphia my second year okay. when I played there for the Rebels. And I actually, my billet house was like 10 minutes down the road from his house. So I would hang out at his place all the time. So I actually got to like pretty cool experience getting to like talk to Danny Briere just like in his home, like see how like he just goes about his days sometimes just like yeah. casually like chat. With him. So that was pretty fun. I mean, his son, Carson, like, great, great kid. He's awesome. I, I mean, I, I miss him. Shout out to you, Carson, when you see this when we go viral. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so I got I got lucky, fortunate enough to be able to uh, meet Danny Breer, though, and have some conversations with him. He also came out on the ice with us a few times, gave us some pointers. So I think Marty's yeah. got a relationship with him, too. Funny that uh, that got brought up. Similar, yeah. I was pretty lucky, too. Um, when I was around uh, 11 years old, him and his son, or my son and himself, we were deep partners, so it was actually really cool. I went over there one time. I'll never forget. I was in his basement. We're playing mini hockey, and I went to go use the bathroom, and I couldn't get back to where we're playing mini hockey out. I got lost. There's just doors after doors after hallways in his basement. It's just it's it's amazing. I think is he, is he still in Haddonfield, Brian? 
That's where it was. Yeah, I don't know if it's still there. We probably shouldn't give out Danny Breer's info, though. But anyway, I killed <laughs> Kentucky. <laughs> yeah. If you're gonna look it up. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna move into us uh, our last two things here. The first, just like. You guys have been through a lot, hockey-wise, life-wise. I mean, at our age, you kind of see a lot. And, like, what advice would you give to current high school ice hockey players? So maybe, like, juniors and seniors playing ice hockey in high school. What have you learned that you might tell them that you wish you knew a couple years ago? You got something? Yeah, I don't know. I mean... That's tough. Some advice, because I I still like think about myself. I I I haven't mastered anything by far. I mean, <laughs> I'd love to play professional hockey someday, and I'm working. It could be that. like what route they should go for recruiting. Um, what you wish you would have picked school wise early on, like. I could. I think I could give my two cents. Yeah, go yeah, ahead. I can give my two I think I was just I was actually talking to this about my or with this about my dad the other day, and. Um, I was saying to him, like, it's funny because I moved away from home. I know a lot of guys moved away from home at a young age. And then I know some guys that never moved away at all and still make it to the NHL. Like you said, James Van Reems, like, grew up in Jersey until he was 18 and then got drafted, right? Which is pretty, pretty unreal. So I guess my advice is that there is no right path. There is no one way to do things. Whatever the best fit is for that player, or for yourself, just follow, follow that path. Don't ever look at a guy and say, oh, well, he did that, and then think that you're the same player as him because it's not the same. Sometimes you need more development, so stay home. Sometimes you are developed and you need to be seen, so move away. Just figure out what's good for you and go from there. Yeah, that's really good advice. I mean, that's what's so unique about hockey, and I think what makes it such a good sport is just the fact that it's different from all the your other big name sports like football, basketball, soccer, baseball, and how you go through like working to get there. You know, most people just go middle school, high school, like college. Whereas hockey, like Marty said, there's so many different routes you could go. I mean, we've had diff- ourselves, the guys on our team. I mean, you talk to most guys on our team. I think everyone has a different story. So I think it's important to understand that everyone develops at different times. You know, there's guys that don't really like come into their own until they're almost in college guys that are unbelievable when they're, you know, 16 years old. So I think people need to recognize that it's a process and it takes time, but that doesn't mean you need to be, get like frustrated with it and just continue to put in the work and eventually things will work out. Um, I think if you're good enough, you'll get seen like, it is what it is. Like if you, if you have what it takes, you'll get noticed. And that's not to like deter anyone from trying hard, but you know what I mean? Like, I think if you, if you just keep working at it, you'll get seen. Um, and just like make it a passion of yours, just like anything. If you want to be good at it, you just got to put in the time. For sure. Yeah. I like all that advice. All right. To wrap things up. We know we all know this is round two of this, but Jay and I both liked the story that Ryan told last time of um, the capture the flag that you could tell oh, yeah. us that the team did, and then we thought that it kind of just like kind of explained the men's ice hockey team to like a whole. So if you want to tell everyone that story, we, like I think that'd be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I can. Do you want me to just go right into it right now? Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So we like. That's just one thing that we did last lot. We didn't get to do it this season um, because of obviously the coronavirus issue. Hence why we're doing this podcast all from different places right now. Um, but yeah, we, we last year, we, uh, we at the end of this year, we got the whole team together and we decided to split up and play capture the flag um, across the entire campus. And that was the best part about it is it was across the entire campus that we had a flag at caves and a flag at the, like the horse um, on North's oh, yeah. campus, the, yeah. the artistic, the artistic horse that sits there. So you had a horse yeah. there. I mean, a flag there and a flag at caves. So you had the bridge. In between. Not, for everyone at home, that's at least a lap around the track away from each other. Definitely, probably more. Yeah, you, have, you have the bridge oh, too. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah, I, don't know how long, I don't know how long the bridge is, but. 
Well, anyway, yeah. Anyways, it we split up into two teams, and I mean, we it was awesome. We ran all over, like we were like acting like I, we had to, people probably thought we were so childish and immature. I mean, we had because you had guys like guarding the flags at these different locations, and this is midday, like on like a Tuesday or something, when we would normally have like practice during the season, so none of us had classes. So meanwhile, you got guys like trying to sneak around in north like running through the hallways there, like kids are going to class and we're just like running through the hallways, scouting out, like trying not to get tagged and put in jail. You got guys like <laughs> sneaking rides with kids leaving like North campus so that they don't have to run across the bridge to caves. They're getting <laughs> run north to like the, the main campus. Like every, it was just, I mean, it was creative and everyone's mindsets were obviously like, this is go time. And it was so intense. I mean, we're running guys down everywhere. You got people like sneaking up behind trees and like telling kids like walk into class like hey like keep it quiet don't let anyone know I'm here like get out of my way like or get out of my way like pushing people out of the way I mean it was electric so we're definitely gonna do that again so look out for the men's ice hockey team on campus. Okay. Um, we're gonna let, definitely let Jay and I know next time you guys do it so we can join in. Yes, we'll, definitely. We'll, we'll we'll strap a GoPro to one of you guys. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yes, that yeah. would be great. So we'll that was the GoPro, strap the GoPro to the flag. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. We well, I'm gonna do, we're gonna do it again. It's already planned. Um, yeah. it's gonna happen. Might might even do it at the beginning of this year when we get all the new guys in to uh yeah. break up, make some friends that way. Um, that, would be, that would be really cool content. Yeah, so maybe we'll, we'll have to – you guys, we'll stay in touch with you guys. I mean, yeah. I hope you guys bring us back for a third round. I mean, I think Marty <laughs> – hopefully, hopefully we won't have to and this works out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Honestly, the, the, sum, the summer beach episode. That's yeah. coming out. <laughs> Look at this. We already got good content. We could be your, like, hallmark guests that just yeah. always bring – Maybe maybe when we interview other guests, you guys can be our call-ins. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are was... you you guys are calling with a Q&A question of your own. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> well, thanks for taking yeah, time out fun. of your day. Um This no, has been Stable Talk. Ryan and Marty. Thank you guys again. Hey, no thank problem. you guys. Fun. Hopefully the the network yeah. picks us up. Oh, Hopefully. Hopefully you two can, once this quarantine is over, go out and, what did you say was the first thing you guys were going to go and do? Hug each other. Hug each other, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys can go out and hug each other. And then go, and then go to the Jersey Shore. Yeah. We'll get too close to that, too. That'll be, a, that'll be an epic moment to hug. It'll be like a slow-mo hug. Yeah, like, like, like Baywatch. Yeah, yeah, Baywatch, too, yeah. All right, guys. Take care. Thank you, Macy. Thanks, Yeah, Jay. thank you. Yeah, you be guys. safe. See you guys. Welcome the homework and everything. Bye. See you guys. See you. Thanks. Bye.